the pleasure of God communion must exceed the pleasure of sex. Taken from Compulsory Dancing by Adidas Samaraj. One who is a lover in God sees only the divine life expressed in and as the one he or she loves. When life is recognised to be the truth of the loved one, then life becomes the loved one. Thus it is just such recognition of life in the form of one's lover and the process of sexual relationship that makes true love possible and relieves the relationship of morbid self-possession, jealousy, binding attachment and romantic illusions. Those who embrace the divine in psychophysical ecstasy of all kinds transcend self and other and are always already free in God. A quote from Love of the Two-Armed Form It is interesting to consider the difference in terms of actual feeling and enjoyment between your association with sex and your association with God. Your involvement with sex is much more elaborate, complex, absorbing and continuous and it is associated with more pleasure. One of the complications of your present state is that you, you simply have not learned or adapted to the intense physical and personal pleasure of God communion at least not in comparison with all the other things to which you have adapted pleasurably. Very little actual association with God is as pleasurable to you as sexual enjoyment or eating or the other games of daily life. Your association with God is almost empty in comparison with the complicated associations of pleasure and pain that you have with everything else. Not having lived as a devotee of God all your life, you show the signs of somebody who has not yet learned how to enjoy association with God. You may have observed that during sexual intercourse you become self-possessed. You dissociate yourself emotionally. The feeling dimension of your being collapses and you become concentrated in mere physical sensation. Under such circumstances, your view emotion, you view emotion or feeling as just a way to make sex more fun. You may even think that you are adding God communion to the event, but really you are only adding pleasure to your own sexual involvement. Such self-manipulation is not the same as self-transcending love. Thus, you see, you suffer emotionally during sexual intercourse. Entering into pleasurable communion with God is part of our necessary consideration of sexuality. Our association with God should be equally as pleasurable as sexual play, even more pleasurable because it is continuous and it involves the entire body, including the mechanisms that you exploit in sexual play. Thus, surrender to God is more pleasurable than sexual play, even in ordinary bodily terms. You simply do not yet know how to surrender, you see. You have not learned it. Meanwhile, you are troubled by what you have already learned, the inclinations you have by tendency. That is the trouble with learning sex before you learn devotion. Therefore, it is difficult to cultivate devotion because you cannot feel good about devotion itself in the face of this intense pleasure of sex. Sex is a familiar and pleasurable distraction, whereas God association is not so familiar and seems to require a certain period of learning during which you do not feel as blissful as you would like. This consideration of the ecstasy of God love is just beginning in you. You are still only considering being ecstatic rather than actually involving yourself in this moment in the fierce direct confrontation with God. You are still only thinking of self-improvement. 
you speak and act like people who are obsessed with, with and somehow consoled by this world. You see then what is required of you in order to take up this way of life. You cannot be naive about yourself. You cannot be full of yourself. There is so much to be transformed, so much to realise, that you must give up all resistance, all wishing that from now on you could be the perfect devotee, without having to learn or suffer or sacrifice. You would like this way to be consoling, but it is not. Yes, you can enter directly into ecstasy in this moment, but only through perfect sacrifice. Your moment-to-moment -moment existence must be the heartfelt practice of literal sacrifice, service and surrender, and it must be performed with great intelligence. This way of devotional surrender cannot be mere emotional good-heartedness. No, you must be intelligent about your practice, and you must make your God communion life as intensely pleasurable and blissful as all the other things that now distract you. God communion is the primary bodily pleasure. It is simply that you have not realised it as such, and therefore you conceive of God communion as sublimiting and ascetic. You think you will engage some form of asceticism, a little bit at a time, and without practising fiercely and then eventually as a result, you will realise God. You tend to feel that God-realisation is a matter of stripping yourselves of attachments, relations and enjoyments, rather than giving up to God. However, in truth, God-communion has nothing to do with such self-denial. It is a matter of outshining attachments, relations and enjoyments through communion with the primal enjoyment. If you are already in a condition of spiritual bodily enjoyment, then all manifest enjoyments become superficial, ordinary, conventional processes that are neither overwhelming nor binding. We were talking recently about St. Francis. Whenever he felt worldly desires, he would manipulate, he would mutilate himself, punish the body for desiring. Once he threw himself into a briar patch. On another occasion, he threw himself naked into the sea to cool off his cravings. Rather than living in the principle of God communion, he was busy working against desire. He associated with troublesome desires for which he could not be sanely responsible. He felt that they were happening to him. Thus he could deal with them only in this bizarre, ritualistic, strategic fashion trying to tear himself away from their binding force. In contrast to St. Francis, others spend their whole lives indulging in sexual desire, but neither the solution of indulgence nor the solution of suppression, as we see it in St. Francis, is illumined. Neither of these two tendencies in any individual is true in itself. Everyone adapts in some way to both solutions. Therefore, this matter of the emotional conversion, of the spiritual transcendence of all experience, is the root of the consideration of sexuality and the root of daily life for all practitioners of this way. When the emotional conversion is not realised moment to moment, all practice becomes mediocre, if not simply false.